You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us this Wednesday evening. I'm Ken Bufa. An air quality alert is now in effect through tomorrow. If you've looked outside or stepped outside, you've seen the thick, hazy conditions. The wind is pushing smoke from raging wildfires in Canada, across the Northeast, and to here on the island. State officials are urging New Yorkers to stay inside. If you wear a mask when you're outdoors, these masks do remove particles that, and they do remove air pollution. Governor Hochul says 1 million N95 masks will be made available at state facilities. Another 600,000 will be ready for local governments to pick up. And poor visibility is making the FAA pause flights heading to LaGuardia Airport while flights to Newark are also slowed. Dozens of flights have already been delayed at airports in the New York City area. Also, speeds on Port Authority bridges and tunnels are being reduced to 30 miles per hour. And Major League Baseball is postponing games in the Bronx and in Philadelphia. The Yankees are now scheduled to take part in a doubleheader against the White Sox starting tomorrow at 4.05. And the poor air quality has caused the State Boys High School across semifinals to be postponed. Teams from Farmingdale, Manhasset, Cold Spring Harbor, and Garden City are now scheduled to play tomorrow at SUNY Albany. And many schools here on the island have been keeping kids inside. Some even suspended recess and other outdoor activities because of the haze and smoky conditions. No word yet it could be the same story tomorrow. So why is all the smoke being pushed our way and when could we see some relief? We turn to experts for the answers. Hi, I'm meteorologist Bill Corbell for Newsday TV. And I'm not exaggerating when I say very few of any Long Islanders have ever seen anything like this. The, the smoke we have overhead makes you feel like you're in the middle of a campfire. Actually, we had some smoke around back in May, but that was high level smoke from fires out in Western Canada. What we're getting now is much thicker, much denser, down to ground level from fires in Ontario and Quebec. Normally the smoke from fires in Eastern Canada would be blown out to sea. But this time around, they're actually moving southward across New York State. It's that brownish tinge you see, the bright white, those are clouds. They're up across New England, but we're in the brown, we're in the smoke. And this is right down at ground level. We've actually had visibility dropping below one mile at times around the, the Northeast. The reason, low pressure over Northern Maine and Eastern Canada sitting still and the counterclockwise motion around it is pulling all that smoke southward and eastward across New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and of course, Long Island. Now, it does appear as if that low is going to start to weaken over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours, and that should mean the worst of this uh, fog will be tonight, maybe early tomorrow, and things will start to improve after that. But there is an air quality alert in effect right now. Uh, be prudent about traveling outside. For News ATV, I'm meteorologist Bill Corbell. For the very latest on the dangerous air quality conditions, stay with us. We'll have the latest on Newsday.com, Newsday TV, and of course on our mobile app. And a Queens man has been indicted in connection with a deadly road raid incident in Baldwin. Patrick Destine was arraigned on murder and other charges today. Prosecutors say the 26-year-old got into a minor crash with David McKenzie back in April. They say Destine repeatedly kicked and stomped on the man's 54-year-old head, leaving him to die just steps away from his house. He pled not guilty and is being held without bail. And a Williston Park teen is accused of potentially disfiguring a young woman. Police say Verlaine Bushy slashed a 20-year-old's face inside the Roosevelt Field Mall. Now, according to court papers, the 18-year-old used a 9-inch kitchen knife. Papers show the victim needed more than 70 stitches in her left cheek. And the co-owner of Maloney Funeral Homes appeared in federal court today after being charged in connection with the January 6th riot at the Capitol. This is Peter G. Maloney walking out of the courthouse in Central Iceland. Prosecutors say the 58-year-old was captured on camera on Capitol grounds in 2021. They say as police put up barricades, Maloney used wasp spray on the officers and was part of a mob that was hitting people they thought were members of the media. Maloney and his attorney refused to comment. And now to a Newsday exclusive. The Nassau DA has launched an investigation into the Oyster Bay Town Inspector General. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday.
The Nassau County District Attorney's Office is now investigating the actions of the man hired to oversee contracts in the town of Oyster Bay. As Newsday first reported, the town ethics board investigated Brian Noon, the town's inspector general, after the town board tabled a $2 million cybersecurity contract that he approved. That contract was with a company that records show had ties to Noon's private business. Any corruption in any town is bad. I think they should investigate any, any allegations of fraud or, or corruption, yes. The ethics board cleared Noon, saying there was no conflict of interest. The DA's office won't comment other than to say it's looking into the matter. A spokesman for the town says the supervisor instructed the town attorney to provide all necessary information to the district attorney for review. Quote, we will do everything to safeguard our town taxpayers and integrity. The Oyster Bay Democratic Committee is now calling for Noon's immediate resignation, plus a complete overhaul of the town ethics board. The Democratic Committee sent this letter to the DA's office asking for an immediate, independent and impartial investigation. Having an inspector general that you can't trust and rely on to be um, not only thorough but secure and honest is worse than not having an inspector general. It gives you, it gives electeds a false sense of security. Noon is still collecting paychecks on his $154,000 a year salary. We reached out to him for a comment, but haven't heard back. I'm Sherry Einhorn for Newsday TV. New York City is suing Suffolk County, the town of Riverhead, and other municipalities as it struggles to deal with the influx of migrants. The city claims Suffolk and Riverhead are trying to prevent migrants from being housed there. Last month's Riverhead's town supervisor declared a state of emergency to prevent migrants from this being sent to there. Now, Suffolk it's County Executive solve. Steve Ballone problems, also took similar action. A little money back. And the future of your commute and the world's most famous arena are intersecting. Alfonso Castillo has a look at the debate over what role Madison Square Garden should play in the planned reconstruction of Penn Station. It's a central question in the debate over an $8 billion reconstruction of Penn Station. Should Madison Square Garden help pay for the planned improvements, or should it get paid? I think that's uh, really short-sighted. Under one proposal floated by Italian firm ASTM, developers would buy the theater from Madison Square Garden and knock it down to create a grand new entrance to Penn Station here on 8th Avenue. But as MSG negotiates a new deal with New York City to continue operating at its current location, MTA officials believe that proposal is backwards. We're in a position where we're able to ask Madison Square Garden to help make improvements as part of Penn Reconstruction. That alternative proposal would do the opposite. It would pay Madison Square Garden something like a billion dollars for the use of that Hulu theater. So we're adding cost without much benefit. Penn Station traveler and Madison Square Garden event goer Josh Vink agreed. I would say no to knocking down the Hulu theater. With most folks coming in on 7th Avenue anyway, why would we use taxpayer dollars to A, knock down a really nice theater? The debate comes as the LIRR and other railroads have said MSG is not compatible with Penn Station. For its part, Madison Square Garden says it's deeply committed to improving Penn Station and the surrounding area. Now, the plan backed by the MTA also comes with some changes for Madison Square Garden. This abandoned taxiway running between 31st and 33rd Street under the garden would all be knocked down, transformed into a grand train hall with a 100-foot tall glass atrium with natural light shining down onto Long Island Railroad riders. For Newsday TV, I'm Alfonso Castillo. At a city planning commission today, MSG says the MTA's proposed reconstruction of Penn Station would force the Rangers out of the garden for at least a year. MSG officials are calling for modest improvements. Now you can read more on the story on Newsday.com. Just click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. And Billy Joel just announced the next show in his farewell stint at the MSG. Long Island's Piano Man will play November 22nd. That's Thanksgiving Eve, and tickets go on sale tomorrow morning. Billy will wrap up his historic residency at MSG in July 2024. All right, let's take now a look at your Long Island weather. And you can see tonight we have partly cloudy skies with temperatures in the 50s, but tomorrow mostly sunny skies with temperatures in the 70s. Let's take a closer look at tomorrow. You can see weather is going to be decent as long as we don't have this air quality, which we likely will. But you can see it will be sunny 
and the temperatures will be right below the 70 degree mark. Watch Newsday TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. A recipe for success. A Hamden's Bakery is serving as a training ground for adults with special needs. Sherry Einhorn has a story you'll see only in Newsday. I'll do the eggs. It's a busy day here at the South Fork Bakery in Amagansett. I wish you could smell what's happening in this kitchen. There is biscotti baking, cookies crisping, and it just makes you want to smile. Everybody's positive and everybody works together. Since 2016, this bakery has been a training and employment program for adults with special needs like 38-year-old Scott Beinecke. I like the opportunities that I get to see when I'm presented with a new um, recipe or a new uh, uh, task to take over. You guys are about halfway done with these, it looks like. Shirley Rook is the founder. She's a speech and language pathologist who says adults with special needs are at a major disadvantage in the job market simply because some businesses don't know what to expect. If we don't have the education or the understanding of the challenges and the benefits you know, of, of having uh, a person with special needs on our workforce, then, um, you know, they don't do it. They don't take that extra step. Here, they're learning measuring, mixing, and baking, but also communication skills, sales, and marketing. Sarah Johnner says she does a little of everything. Putting blondies in the bags, and I do the farmer's markets, and I do the deliveries, and I do about a 1,000 labels a week. Now, the bakery has a very specific goal this year, and that is to have six employees working in outside businesses by the end of the year. One already is, and another is about to start. Scott works at his other job in the food service industry three days a week, and so far, he says, it's going very well. I feel more confident doing other tasks another, in other places. The bakery sells to about 50 local businesses, which is why they have so much work to do. Businesses love our product, love our cookies, um, love what we do, love the mission, and they're really happy to support us. In Amagansett, I'm Shari Einhorn for Newsday TV. Now for more on the South Fork Bakery, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. School is almost out for summer, and there are some new places for kids to play. Elisa DeStefano has a story you'll see only in Newsday. There are new play places for your little one to have big fun. Are you ready to play? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Our first stop, La La Land in Babylon Village. Imagination runs wild, and kids can run too, in the large, light, bright space created by a mom who searched for somewhere like this to bring her daughter. And there weren't a lot of places that offered me the flexibility to do so while I was a working mother, uh, so I wanted to create my own space. Children can climb the jungle gym, pretend they're a vet, and work in the cafe. What do you like to make in the kitchen? Yeah. Spaghetti. Spaghetti! Here you pay as you play with no class commitment. I am now an official toy tester. Our next stop is to talk it. Play a la mode is an open play cafe and a pretend village featuring a school, salon, and supermarket. The magical make-believe land was brought to life by a former nanny who once searched for a padded play space for the kids she cared for. There isn't anything like that in this area to begin with, so I just wanted to bring it closer and a place for parents to hang out and their children to have their birthday parties. Our last stop, Nassau County, more than play in Seaford. Are those for me? Thank you. More than play was created by two moms who are speech language pathologists. So more than play means that we're not just a play space, we're more than a play space, we are a play and enrichment center. So we have our curated play space up front and we have our classroom in the back and all of our classes are led by licensed and certified therapists and educators. Children can play with purpose in the pizzeria, at the doctor's office and on a construction site. With one hour open social play sessions, it provides flexibility for parents and 
a great place to play, and build a foundation for early learning. For News Day TV, I'm Lisa DiStefano. All right, let's keep building. Now for more on the new places to play, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Get more of the stories you've seen on Newsday TV at Newsday.com. Plus breaking news, investigations, things to do, restaurants, and other Long Island news you can't get anywhere else. At Newsday.com, covering Long Island like no one else can. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you for joining us. We'll leave you now with a look at your seven-day forecast.